your character, David, he's accused of being like this big time rebel, kind of mm -hmm. like cult leader. Um, mm -hmm. But how would you say that his ideals challenge some of the things that we are up against as humans in today's society as it pertains to like social media and filters and all that stuff? Oh, man, that's a great question. I think, um, you know, just what the smoke simply represents is, you know, stripping all that away and just getting back to the basics of just being a human, honestly, in the most simple way to put it. I think that David is a representation of of that, you know, one of one of the best representations of what the smoke means in that, you know, in that world, in that mm -hmm. dystopian world, our dystopian world, of you know, of the ugly film. But um I think it's still so relevant, <laughs> you know, yeah. today. I know, I know we we shot this in a modern time, but this book, you know, Scott Westerfield's book came out back in what 05, mm -hmm. 06. And to for it to be still so relevant now, and especially now, I think this is like yeah. prime time with social media, mm -hmm. is just amazing to see, you know. And I think that's one thing about this film that I really love is that the message is so timeless, you know. And I think David, what he represents is timeless and what the smoke represents. And absolutely. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, for you, Chase, because your character act actually knows went through with the surgery, right? And he kind yeah. of changed them and everything. So how do you hope that a film like this redefines the term pretty and the pressure that we as humans and especially teens, I love that they honed in on like age 16, but like, yeah. how do you hope that redefines terms like that term pretty for the teens that are coming up and that will hopefully watch this movie? Oh, I think, I think we have just become obsessed with this idea of physical beauty yeah. and it's, that's just not it. It's, it's gotta be internal. And I think hopefully Paris's journey uh, is a little bit of the inside of no matter how far you push the narrative with the physical elements of beauty. And granted, like I'm the first person to be for if you don't feel comfortable with yourself, do whatever you want to do and love yourself externally. But, you know, it, it all has to come from internal. It all has to be from your heart, from your soul. And so hopefully it just it sort of implores the youth to go out and to to get to know themselves better mm -hmm. and not think that, you know, by scrolling through and double tapping a bunch of photos that that's going to change their perspective or outlook on life. Absolutely. That's such a great answer. And then um, just lastly, for the both of you, I should have asked this first, but what was one standout moment in the script that made you go like, yes, like I absolutely have to be a part of this project. Ooh, and we can start with you, Keith. Um... I think honestly, it was the, I think it was David. I mean, it was so many things in the script that was just, that just seemed so fun to just film and, you know, like just getting back to just having fun as an actor. There was so many things within the script where it's like, yo, I want to do this and to just have some fun. You know what I'm saying? But I think David, his character really spoke to me. I feel like he's such a strong character. And I think not all the time, like not, I'm not always like that in real life, you know? And I just felt like it could be fun you know, embodying someone like David on screen in this dystopian world. Mm -hmm. Another reason, too, I mean, come on now, we back to the dystopian era. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They always come back in times. I mean, always come back around. So that was really, I was like, yo, I, I got to be a part of this. And I remember Uglies coming out, you know what I'm saying, when I was younger. So I was just like, oh, this is super cool. A book adaption of Uglies. Like, come on now. Mm -hmm. If I'm being, if I'm being completely yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, it was just, you know, every now and again, you get to read a script and what usually would take you a certain amount of time, you finish way faster. Yeah. And that's usually the first indication of of something really special. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading it and finishing it and rereading it and immediately saying, I, I don't know what I have to do, but I will give my pinky toe to be a part of this project. And, uh, you know, I'm just a sucker for a hero's journey and to see a female lead go on a hero's journey that is so relevant for what's going on in society right now felt like such a no-brainer then and it feels like even more of a no-brainer now um and then as we built out the cast it's just been a project that we stayed in touch we never lose touch so it's i really do think that um it's just sort of a d all the above with this film there is there was no reason to not do it what was like that one standout 
or key moment in the script that made you go like, I have to be a part of this project? It was the whole world that was created. I've wanted to do a sort of sci-fi futuristic something for a really long time. I've been manifesting it. And so when this came along, I was really excited. The whole idea of this world in the future where everyone has this surgery at 16 to become pretty and the uglies are people who just look normal. I just thought that that was some, there was something very prescient about the moment that we live in right now with filters, with Instagram and how much we, so many of us are more excited about seeing our filtered version, the filtered version of ourselves, the face app version of ourselves than we are the real version. And it just felt really timely, even though Scott Westerfield wrote these books 19 years ago. Um, and I've always wanted to play a character like Dr. Cable. She is, um, I mean, some people might call her the villain, um, but I think, and there is something villainous about her, but I think she's way more complicated than that. And so this just, this character is a dream. The world is a dream. I just really, I really want to do more sci-fi because that's, that I love sci-fi and action stuff. That's what I watch, you know, um, yeah. on my own, so. Absolutely. And, you know, just kind of staying there with Dr. Cable, um, what were some kind of, because obviously in the film, she is, I guess you would say the villain, but are there any um, parts of her that you could like relate to and what kind of a space did you have to go to, to bring her to life? I went back to my journals, actually. I, I reread them this morning because we shot this like three years ago and I was reading, you know, I had notes from the book and um, the book really informed me. And in the book, she um, has eyes like a wolf. And so we, um, I, Kimberly Harris is my acting coach and we've been doing animal work for many years where we sort of pick an animal for the character. And what's fun is when it's in, in the text. So she's a wolf. And so finding, doing all the research around wolves and like how wolves protect um, their, just watching how wolves are sort of predatory creatures, but when they have cubs, they protect them. And they're really, they have, their senses are heightened. And so all of that really like thinking about how a wolf operates informed so much of like Dr. Cable creating this society where everyone is safe, right? Where she, that she's super protective of, and there's, there's this smoke, there's this resistance that threatens the society she's created. So threatening my cubs. And so I will do anything to make sure that the world that I've created is not threatened. And so for, even though she may be considered a villain, she wants this society that is perfect, this society that is, all of my intentions are about equality. All my intentions are about um, no conflict. The, um, the um, people 300 years ago destroyed the world with um, um, being, you know, it, be, being terrible for the environment, wars. So the world was destroyed, right? So in the world that I have, created, I want no more strife. I want no more war. I want the environment to be taken care of. And if there are people who threaten that, then they have to be disposed of. So um, she doesn't think of herself as a villain. She, her vision is really about a perfect society and she's created it. And there's something kind of amazing about like stepping into someone who's created the world that they want to live in. like. That's just super exciting, the power in that. And the power in beauty as well. That mm -hmm. beauty is the thing, right? That makes everyone equal. Being pretty is, is, is the great equalizer is something I very much relate to in terms of, you know, growing up not feeling pretty and finding my own sense of beauty and just have a very critical relationship to beauty. That's a whole you know, especially as a black woman, as a trans woman. But I've understood my whole life that beauty is power and not feeling beautiful and not feeling legible in the um, ways in which the world thinks about beauty um, 
you f- I f- you feel I felt like an outsider. And so find trying to make myself legible in terms of beauty, it's been a huge part of me self-actualizing, but also trying to find a place, create a space, a place for myself in the world. Can you walk me through the decision to cho- to choose like age 16 as that focal point for the pretty surgery? Right. Um, I think when it comes to looks, when you're a little kid, everyone just thinks you're cute and you're fine. And, you know, you don't really think about the way you look very much. And when you're an adult, you sort of get over yourself eventually. And you're, um, you know, there's not as much at stake in being beautiful. But there is that key moment when you're in your teen years when like a bad haircut is just the worst possible thing that could happen. Like even a bad hair day is the worst thing that could happen. And, and I think there's also something about teenagers and rebellion that's interesting. Like when you're a little kid, you know, you can cause havoc and you don't really scare anybody. And when you're an adult, you know, you know how to act and you know how to like not get in trouble. But when you're a teenager, people get really nervous about you. And there's a lot of, you know, every time teenagers like anything, whether it's rock and roll or rap or skateboarding or, you know, or TikTok, it becomes something you have to make illegal. And I think people are just inherently scared of teenagers. So that press, so that set push between, you know, teenagers needing to be controlled and teenagers worrying about their looks was kind of how uh, I, you know, what I was winding together when I wrote Uglies. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one thing that I love about the film is like, you know, when Tally is like waking up and talking to like the, I don't know, like the little, the filter or whatever, it kind of reminds me of like, the surgery reminds me of like Instagram filters and how we tend to see our, people tend to see themselves these days only through that Instagram filter. With that said, why would you um, say that like right now is such a key and important time in society for the film adaptation of these books? Yeah, like when I wrote them, they were very much about real plastic surgery and and people actually doing that. But but now everybody does a little bit of cosmetic surgery on themselves every day. You face tune and you filter and you like blur. And you also do the same thing with your life. Like you get rid of, you know, you, you don't show the fact that your shoelace got untied. You don't show the fact that you tripped and fell over. You just show that latte and like how you look awesome in the sunset. And uh, and I and I think that sort of thing that we don't want to convey the whole truth of ourselves. We want to do this little surgery and do this little dance and smile these fake smiles for the world. Is you know it's 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 gotten it's it's even more of a big deal than it used to be. And I and I think that the the film is like the perfect way to show that in a way that you know you, writing books about the internet is kind of difficult, but writing you know, showing a film about the way we change ourselves and the way we yassify ourselves and filter ourselves makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And then just lastly here, Scott, in what ways do you hope Uglies, um, the film adaptation, redefines the term pretty and the pressure that we as humans, especially teens, place on ourselves to be perfect? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think it is important to like reclaim terms, whether it's like queer or weird or um you know ugly or pretty and and i and i so that would be interesting if people start to i mean i've got to leave that to the kids i'm not gonna like <laughs> that's not my job but uh, i'm i'll be interested to see if any kind of um you know the the books are very involved in in new language and the way people make up languages to um to express themselves and to like define the world that they live in so i would i would love to see it if uh if, if we start using the word ugly in a different way. <laughs>